Good afternoon, Rotarians and guests, please rise. Welcome to the Cade Museum for this Rotary Club of Gainesville meeting on this Tuesday, October 25th. I'm Tom Collette, your Sergeant at Arms. Visiting Rotarians joining us virtually via Zoom, please identify yourself in the chat. And if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, register your participation by sending an email, info at rotarygainesville.org. We begin our meeting as we do with song and pledge, and he's back after missing last week. Please welcome Pete Enwall. Good to be back. Can you, let's see, I'm gonna test the mic. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, all right. So, um, you may know, if you know me, you know that I'm sensitive to the changing of the season, especially in Gainesville, because we have to look for stuff. And I noticed that it might be a more severe winter than normal because I've because the squirrels are gathering more nuts than normal. I wasn't too concerned about it until yesterday afternoon when I noticed that my neighbor was missing. We're going to sing God Bless America. <laughs> God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home. Sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Please join me in pledging allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Thank you very much, Pete. Please remain standing now for our invocation today, offered by Ian Fletcher. Thank you, Tom. Um, just one update. Last week, I talked a little bit about Ann Gay Birch and that she fell and had surgery. She has been transitioned to Charter Senior Living Facility, and just remember that if you really reach, want to reach out to her and send a card or anything, just contact our president, President Greg Young, and he'll help you in that light. Let us pray. My light, my shield, my hiding place. Thank you for yet another day and for your grace upon this meeting. Remember Rotarians and their family members that are sick. Restore them to health. Thank you for sustainable Cambodia, which has touched many lives over the years and the blessings bestowed on individuals in Cambodia. Bless every Rotarian in this club and across the world who has traveled to Camb Cambodia or donated to support this great program. Remember Richard, continue to lead this effort. Remember our guests today and the Cade Museum and all the children they touch through the animation land. Supply all our needs, we pray, amen. Thank you very much, Ian. If, is, if you're visiting us today, either a visiting Rotarian or a guest of one of our members, please remain standing. And Jason Shank doesn't have the microphone yet. We'll get that to him. He'll bring that around. You can introduce your guest. The guy with the crazy ties first. Uh, uh, welcome, Rotarians. My name is Bill Stashevich. <laughs> better known as Pizza Bill. I, I don't have any real guests, but Jan hasn't been here for six months. This is Jan Legler. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> and and she's she's responsible for that red carpet out there. And she brought her friend Mia Jones, who hasn't been here for nine months. So how about a little for Mia? All right. So so uh, I, I will tell you though that we have enough Rotarians that don't come here to fill this place up so check out the website invite some people to come here so so we ain't got no room for them bye bye thank you bill thanks bill 
Thanks, uh, uh, Richard Allen, and um, honored again this week to have my guest, um, Danny Alvarado with Team Logic, who does IT services, including here for the Cade and for Sustainable Cambodia. Thank you, Danny. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Kuzmicki. I have my friend Krista. She comes to us from Nicanope. And she loves jewelry design, and she you can often find her at the Haven for Hospice, helping them out volunteering and organizing their displays. I have a guest. He's right there standing next to you. He's a local attorney. Please welcome my good friend, Tom McDermott. Hi, my name is Joseph Orr. I'm with the Boy Scouts of America. I'm pleased to introduce to you Michelle Foster, who is our newest hire to serve Gainesville for the Boy Scouts of America. Fellow Rotarians, Melanie Shore with Drummond Bank, a, a division of uh, Seacoast National Bank. And I have with me uh, Sam Fregale, and he is with Seacoast Investments. Thank you, Jason. My name is Nancy Hart, and I'm so pleased to bring as my guest today, Marsha Kiner, who is a native of Gainesville. Hold that thought, because she is the new executive director of the Children's Trust. Welcome to all to our meeting today. Again, we have a conga line of announcements for you from fellow members. Join me first in welcoming to the front of the room here at our podium, Scott Winsler. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, you know, listen, um, 12 years ago, the leadership of this club uh, had a brilliant idea. They wanted to embody the essence of this club in terms of our respect for uh, ethics and business. And they created the Ethics and Business Award. Year after year after year, this club has uh, garnered nominations from not only club members, but from distinguished citizens of our community to nominate an ethics and business award winner each year. And it is our responsibility to do that again this year. It's everybody in this club has a network of associates, of friends, of relatives who know somebody who is worthy of this award. I've put out nomination forms on the tables I ask that you send this to your friends, your network, to see if there are people that they know, or if you know, should be nominated for this award. It's a distinguished award. It represents our club very well. So I highly encourage everyone to put some thought into this nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. Next up, please welcome Jane Morawski. Hi, Rotarians. I'm Jane Moraski. I'm the executive director of the Education Foundation of Alachua County. And on your table, there's only one or two of these flyers that says you can change a life over lunch. I know many of you have already been mentors for the Take Stock in Children's program run by the Education Foundation. If you have in the past, thank you. If you are currently, thank you. But we need 37 more mentors. That means these children that come through the program meet with you uh, once a week or every other week at their school. So you're talking about 30 minutes every other week. Um, we recruit them in seventh grade. They stay through 12th grade. They keep their grades up. They get a full ride for two years to any Florida college as a result of this. It is usually first generation students. It truly changes the trajectory of their lives and their children's lives to give them a college education. I have never been a mentor. I just signed up. It's not that hard. There are a couple steps. Contact uh, Christy at my office. We hope to have you really think about doing this. Um, I'm excited to get started with my mentee, and uh, I look forward to hearing how all of you have done it, and hopefully it might change your life too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jane. Up next, please welcome up Jim Skiles. Come on, Jim. Come on down. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, fellow Rotarians. For those of y'all that don't know me, I am Jim Skiles and Deed, Tony and Jacob. Why don't you all come up here with me for a minute, if you don't mind? Um, I'm here. I'm a member of the Downtown Club. And this year, we are celebrating our 10th annual Wine to Water West Skiles Water Stewardship Award Banquet here at the Cade Museum next Wednesday night, November 2nd, um, to recognize this year's award winners. There's three parts to our program that I think y'all would love, and many of y'all have been before, to participate in this event. The first part is fellowship. Uh, an hour of delicious hors d'oeuvres, beer provided by First Magnitude. You can sample their whole menu of beers and wine and sodas for those of y'all that are beer drinkers. So we have delicious food and fellowship. The second part is recognizing a for-profit business, a non-for-profit, and an individual that has practiced outstanding water stewardship. And we want to recognize those people and honor my brother whose career was to educate and inspire people to protect our aquifer and springs that we fortunately have surrounding us. So what we do on top of the ground impacts what we're drinking. A few years ago, I asked everybody to raise their crystal clear glasses of water at the Hilton, I think it was the Hilton back then, to honor Wes, but we are continuing to honor Wes by doing this. The third part of our program is we have inspiring, exceptional speakers, many of them with backgrounds with National Geographic, come and tell their story how water has impacted their life. This year, Dr. Jason Gully is our guest speaker. He's currently in the Amazon finalizing a research project now. Uh, he has an article coming out in National Geographic in a few months about manatees. And our theme this year really is, in addition to recognizing people, is to realize that the water just not only serves us, but the wildlife that depend upon it. And Dr. Gully is an expert in manatees. So we're gonna have a focus on manatees. And that's why our theme picture taken by my brother that you can have a chance to win that night is featured. The fourth exciting part and the reason these two gentlemen are up here with me is because for years, we have been looking to partner on an international project that would impact the quality of water in lands far away from us. And knowing Jacob and Tony that I have for a number of years, the work that Jacob is doing with the Southern Sudan Healthcare Organization is a perfect match for us to come together as partners and with your help and our club helps and other district clubs to work towards a global grant. And if you'll come next Wednesday night, we'll be presenting our first check to kind of kick that off. And uh, Richard, we're going to be seeking your help on how you did Sustainable Cambodia to make this another great work of Rotary, not only here in our community, but throughout the world. Thank you. Uh, tickets, 50 bucks. There's nothing on TV next Wednesday night that will outperform our, our program. Thank you. I'll have tickets over here through the back. Thank you very much, Jim. Next up, Lisa Mueller and Dwight McKee. You're next at the podium. Oh, behind me. <laughs> hey, good afternoon. I'm Dwight. I'm here to uh, let everybody take a look at the flyer on your table. This is the save to date for the Seafood Spectacular. It's a great Rotary event. We haven't had it in three years since COVID. Um, it's Thursday, November 10th. That's the second Thursday in November. Um, we look forward to having everybody come out. There's a little QR code on the flyer here. So pass this out to your friends, family, uh, coworkers, if you want them to order tickets and just scan that little QR code and all the information is there. West Corley also, uh, West Eubank will also be selling uh, tickets over here. So $60 right here for the tickets. Um, final thing is, is I have a sign up sheet on the table. So we looking up for volunteers to um, help with uh, the event. Cleanup days are this Saturday and next Saturday out at Hatchet Creek, as well as looking for some help with uh, serving beer, wine, maybe a little kitchen help. Um, uh ticket ticket takers things like that so i have a sign up sheet as well if you're willing to to help out um any other questions feel free to see me or lisa 
my partner in crime over there. She's um, been a big help as well as as as, long, as well as uh, Wes Eubank. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dwight. Today we have a special treat for you. It's time. Who is that? Tony Hooten right there. All right, Tony can't wait for a poem. It's time for John Gregory to make his way up here. I, I don't know the subject material for his poem, but I hope it has something to do with beat Georgia. We'll see. Uh, this poem is called Which Witch is Witch? Two witches had fabulous traits. Their spells would victims be raped. The witches together were living. The duo were found to be giving. I guess you could call them broom mates. Caskets don't speak very often. When they do, your nerves harden, not soften. One was saying to the other, now listen here, brother. I asked you before, sat you coffin? Boy, I've got some news. Ghosts drink, that is true. But they don't get far walking into a bar. Ghosts can't handle their booze. <laughs> no. <laughs> The Georgia Bulldog lives quite posh. A pumpkin, he thought, he'd just wash. But clumsy when wet, he knew what he'd get. If you drop a pumpkin, you get squash. Happy Halloween. <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? With that hat, you kind of look like Karnak the Magnificent. Yes. Welcome back. You want to come up here and sing the song Welcome Back? That would be appropriate. Welcome back. Anyway. Oh, we had the piano started for a minute, sound like. Anyway, it's time to get this meeting back on the rails, if you will. Please join me in welcoming to the podium now, your president, Greg Johnson. Sorry, Greg Young. Just seeing if anyone was paying attention. Well, I didn't know I just had a name change, but I guess I'm, uh, I'll, I'll answer anything. Anyway, welcome everyone. I'm so glad to see you here and everyone on Zoom, welcome as well. And yes, I did see Gabe come in under the wire, and I'm not going to let him get out, but thank you for calling him out, Bill. And Gabe, raise your hand. Where are you? There he is. Gabe and Mia and Jan, all welcome home. And as you've heard through the announcements, there's a lot going on these days. And Rotary does a lot and impacts a lot of lives. And it's through events that we do that are fun, that are engaging, and that help to change lives. So when you can do it all like that together, it makes it just the best way to get things done and accomplished in this world. So if you're not having fun doing it, then it's probably not that great a thing. But we do have fun. So we will have, as you heard, the first cleanup day at the site this Saturday. Hope to see you out there. I know it's the game. So if some people can't come this week, there will be another one next week. Another. There's a game? Oh, not so big? Not such a big game? Okay. 3.30, right. Right. Yeah, you could come early. And if you're going to watch it on TV, 3.30. Okay. So we have that. And that's in preparation for our event, as you heard, on the 10th. So mark your calendars. Make sure it's on your calendars for uh, excuse me, November 10th. And also, you heard about the Wine to Water event. I'm excited to hear about the recipients being honored here this year uh, that are in our club and that wonderful project that, that uh, Jacob and his team is working on. 
uh, as you saw on that. Uh, maybe some new members may not be aware of a major event we have in our spring. Just make sure you get it on your calendar for new members. It's our Wild Game Feast. It's our major signature event. It's a huge fundraiser of all the clubs in Gainesville, downtown Rotary Club as well. Got it. And, and um, right there is perfect. And uh, so I want to make sure everybody knows about that ahead of time. But I wanted to kind of go back in time a little bit. And I'm ready for that, sir. DeLorean. Oh, you brought it back in time from back in time, the DeLorean. OK, well, while we're out there doing a little rummaging around the, the feast site, I ran across this thing. And um, Matthew Brady might remember this. Matthew, can you come up? I have to I have to give him something so it didn't get put in to some receptacle. I wanted to go into his hands. This is from Matthew Brady's year as Feastmaster 2019. That was a, a watermark in terms of the, the money that was raised that year through the sponsorship committee and every year since we've raised more each year yep. and a huge part of, I mean it wouldn't happen without the sponsorship committee I want to call out Matthew and Jason and there are others on that committee so there's a long list but they're primary and I want to thank you sir for your work yep, absolutely right if you want to be on that list for next year, let those guys know, and you could be a sponsor. That's really the major way we raise funds for that, for the, in the community, for these groups in the community. And we do give them to Alachua County nonprofits that are worthy and have shown their track record. Uh, let's see, boom, 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 they did that. I think at this point, what I'd like to do is bring Elena Frazier up to make the introduction of our speaker. Elena, please come up. Well, I've got the easiest job of the day. I have the pleasure of introducing you today to someone who needs no introduction. Um, yeah, that's that's the joke. Um, you know, you may know Richard Allen as uh, a wonderful Rotarian, so much he's done for this club. You may also know him as kind of that serial entrepreneur about town. He's uh, one of the founders of RTI. Uh, he's had several companies on the NASDAQ. Just an amazing, brilliant mind that Richard has. But one thing you may not know about Richard, he's an accountant, but he epitomizes that word that the Cade coined a couple of weeks ago called inventivity. Uh, I've seen him go toe to toe with our engineers at Voss Systems and really you know, get with them and help them and guide them to making the next great thing. So with that engineer's mind, with an accountant's attention to detail, and with this huge heart of gold. You're going to see all of these little qualities in the presentation that's coming up about sustainable Cambodia. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce my hero, Richard Allen. I thank you, Elena. And, and I could just as easily be introducing Elena saying all the very same things about Elena. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. <laughs> so um, the, uh, the, we're going to have an auction coming up here December 6th uh, for the, the proceeds are going to uh, go to the Cambodia project. And so I just wanted to kind of walk through some, some uh, slides with you and give you a little background on it. I know most of you have seen this in previous years, so it's not going to be a lot of new information, but there are, uh, there are always great things that are happening. Um, for those who didn't, you know, who haven't seen this before, uh, Cambodia, of course, is located kind of in between Laos and Vietnam and Thailand. So it's a little quadrant there in Southeast Asia. Um, we work in the rural villages there, and we're working in the aftermath of the Khmer Rouge. I suspect everybody knows the Khmer Rouge experience uh, after the Vietnam War, uh, famine, carpet bombing, etc. Uh, set off this uh, genocide that was an internal genocide in which um, some two and a half to three million people perished in, in a country of 13 million. So really terrible. And the, the underpinnings of that were that the Khmer Rouge wanted to return the country back to, you know, year zero. So anybody that had an education, anybody that had any exposure to Western culture at all, 
was put to death or put into the work camps and died. Um, if you wore eyeglasses, you were put to death. Um, if you had, you know, if you knew any words in a foreign language, you were put to death. So, and they relocated everybody around the country so that the peasant rice farmers who could have grown rice where they grew up were now in a different part of the country and couldn't do that. So it, the country just fell apart. Finally, the United Nations stepped in and they, they wound up, you know, rebuilding the country, creating a democracy. But you're creating a democracy from ground zero where nobody has an education, nobody knows how to do anything. So that's kind of the environment into which we, we, we walked all these displaced families in different areas of the country, nobody with an education. Um, the dry season is three, four to five months long. During that, there's, you know, you have to walk miles sometimes to get water. Uh, Elena took this picture in one of our early trips, um, young boy walking miles to get water. Um, you know, uh, kids growing, uh, raising their, their, their siblings, um, so not having a chance to get to uh, school, to get an education, uh, a lot of malnutrition. So that's the environment in which we stepped when we tried to, to help. And we wanted to help in a way that was an empowerment-based model. We, we didn't want to just walk in and say, oh, you know, we're going to give you everything. In fact, we initially went in with these ideas that we had picked up from Heifer International and Care International and these other organizations on, you know, what we thought would be the really great way to do things. And we rapidly learned that it was a lot better to listen to the village families. They knew what they really needed. And, and in doing that, it became much more of a true empowerment project. Um, and and uh, uh, so we have just followed this model since then of having the Cambodian families be behind this and to really help them get started. Uh, in 2005 is when we really kind of kicked into gear there. Uh, we took a, a big trip over um, Tim Sorrell, uh, who does the filming for the, uh, for the Gator football team and the like, uh, came, went over and did a video with us. Uh, that's Tim with some of the kids. As part of that, Tim was uh, telling some of the locals about Rotary uh, and, and the concept of service above self just really clicked with them. It was like a light bulb went off when the translator was saying service above self. And, and that led to their creating the Rotary Club of Posat. The Rotary Club of Posat finally, in, it was the only club in central Cambodia that had a, a Rotary Club like this. And, and so then it shows up on Rotary International's website, right? Um, so anybody that's traveling Southeast Asia decides, Rotarians decide maybe they want to go into Cambodia. As part of that, they go to the RI website and they look to see, well, is there a club in Cambodia? Well, yeah, there is. Well, that led to the, a club from uh, Perth and Western Australia visiting and then getting all of Western Australia into the organization. It led to Calgary, Canada club and Alberta clubs coming in and becoming part of it. New York City clubs uh, joining and becoming part of it. And it has grown now to where we have uh, Rotary, uh, more than 120 Rotary clubs around the world that have been part of the program to date. So, and that all started right here at this club. So I think everybody ought to give yourselves a hand because. <laughs> the, uh, uh, and all this starts with, uh, like I say, with the, on the empowerment side, when you're working in the villages, um, instead of walking in and saying, here's what we're going to do, <laughs> you walk in with, with your uh, fellow Cambodian uh, team members and you, and you ask them what, they, what kind of programs and projects they want to implement in their village. And then you encourage them to put together project plans so they learn project planning and they learn how to run things over a two to three year period. This is literally the photo you're seeing here is literally a, a, you know, one of the early village development meetings. This is the way they take place. They're outside. You have a lot of village women involved, a lot of the, a lot of the, the wives. So the underpinnings of the, of the program are, are well, uh, wells for clean water. So on the well side, and I'm just going to run some numbers as we go through this, we've had more than um, uh, about 230 wells that have been installed as part of the project. Uh, Biosand filters, these provide water for the individual families and for the schools. Um, and we've had more than 2,500, more than 2,500 of these biosand filters have been put in. Uh, these things work entirely with local materials. They're built right there on site, so you don't have to bring in plastic and the like from outside. Uh, these large rooftop rainwater harvesting tanks that you see here, 
We build those right on site in Cambodia as well. Uh, we've had almost 450 of those that have been installed and they're put in many of the community, well, uh, community schools and preschools. We have an animal pass on program, which did come from Heifer International. So everything from chickens and pigs to cows uh, wind up being, and water buffalo wind up being part of the pass on program. And that empowers the families uh, the, the families are actively involved in every one of these projects in the program, and, and especially in the animal pass-on. They create self-help groups, three or four to five families. They pass the progeny of the animals on to other family members in, in and other, in others in their group. And then each village actually winds up helping another surrounding village when this thing expands. Um, uh, agriculture is the underpinning of the income part of this. The families have to be able to make enough money to keep their kids in school. And, and so agriculture is a really big component of it. They do sweet potato, they do corn, they do all sorts of alternative crops they can take to market and make significant money from it. Um, so the empowerment model that we have really has these two sides, uh, two levels to it. One is the community development that I've been talking mostly about, which is the water, the sanitation, the income generation. And then the other side is education. For long term, to actually make a generational change in a country, you've got to be able to have the kids make a difference. And that's where the, the very first village development committee we had in the very first village in which we worked, the, the, fam, the, the mothers in the, in the village surprised us. We thought they were going to say, Priority number one is latrines or water or what or something. Priority number one for them was to get a preschool so that they could actually work during the day and keep their work in the in the fields and keep their kids safe and have their kids get an education. So that started the preschool program, and we've had numerous numerous uh, preschools in most of the villages in which we work since we started. There's a hot meal program as part of that. So the kids, um, uh, some of the mothers get together and create a hot meal for the kids during the the preschool. Uh, part. Uh, those lead into community schools. Uh, the community schools do um, uh, help the kids get ready to go to further into grade school, so they might go halfway up through uh, elementary school. Um, we have, uh, you know, in, and in those schools, this is a great photo of one of them. This is just representative of what they look like, and a lot of enthusiasm from the kids for what they're learning. And they, they also learn expanded stuff in health and nutrition, what foods are really good for them, um, the importance of sanitation. They understand they get some you know, underpinnings in science and how that works. Um, they, they, we have these libraries in every one of our schools and the libraries are just astonishing places. The kids really get involved in, in the libraries. And, and these lead to, the community schools lead to our enrichment schools. And in our enrichment schools, I think in, including all of them around all the different areas we have, and Susan will probably correct me on the numbers at some point, but I think we have six, seven, eight, uh, nine, nine schools, I think now, that are do go up through grade 12. And this is uh, you know just one of those nine schools. So a lot of kids going to school as part of this program. In that, they get exposure to computers, um, they get, uh, uh, we have dormitories for the girls to be able to spend time in uh, when they're for, too far from their village to be able to come on a daily basis and they'll go home over the weekend. Uh, we have youth clubs which are based on rotary in each of these clubs. These, ro these uh, youth clubs are really fantastic. You just got to experience it on one of our trips some days. Uh, the, uh, they have rotating membership based on rotary. They do all the service and community projects. And then we have a scholarship program for these kids when they graduate from these little rural schools, they get to go to Cambodian University. So we've had, um, and, and I believe the number is around 450 kids that have gone through the university program or are a part of it today, um, and including about, I think, 350 so far that have actually graduated and, and gone on. So this is amazing. I mean, coming from, you know, from a village where you had no water, no running water, no electricity, you know, and, and, and getting a chance to go to school and then wind up going to university. And, and what, I don't think I have a slide on this, but what's incredibly cool is that of our team, our Cambodian team, because you have to have a big Cambodian team that's part of this process, they're the only folks that are paid, only Cambodians, everybody international is a volunteer in this. The, uh, of those Cambodians, more than half of them are graduated uh, kids who started as little kids with us, grew up, went to university, and have come back and are now part of the program and running the program. <laughs> and, 
and 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 that's really you know what we think is the long term sustainable uh, change for for a country like this. The uh, uh, so we like I love this slide. This is another one of those photos that Elena took. It's just beautiful. But generational change starts starts there with the kids. Goes through the preschool programs. Uh, the health and nutrition that they that they get and that they learn up through the community schools, uh, through the uh, uh, all the stuff that they get to do with computers and the like, um, the science education they get. We've taken over microscopes for them. Uh, they they just become these incredible young people as they grow. Uh, the the young girls we we have uh, more than fifty percent of all of our students are are girls and and, and young women. So we really have a big emphasis on that. Um, and the youth clubs get this sustaining leadership that allows them to come back and do great things. 16 is probably actually 17 generations by now of these university scholars. Uh, and uh, we empower women as part of this program. We empower families as part of this program, empower the young people as part of it. And honestly, we're empowering all the Rotarians that are part of this, because that's, you know, at, at the end of our lives, this is what matters, is giving back and making the world a better place. And uh, it, th this is uh, just a representative shot of one of our trips. We have trips coming up in January and February. Uh, we will be leading 56 Rotarians from around the world in January, and then another 36 in February. Uh, as we go through the programs and the projects and meet all these kids and get out into the villages and meet the families. And um, so with that, I'm going to invite Elena and Susan to come up here quickly and just be with me for the last five or 10 minutes as we talk a little bit about uh, wrapping up on this. Yeah. Oh. That's a big thank you. <laughs> Elena, do you want to tell a little bit about the auction coming up? Absolutely. And we're going to have the man in the yellow suit come help us out with the auction. And I don't see Ben here today, but he's going to be doing the auctioneering for us. We've got, we're going to have a live auction. So far, we've got a lot of really good live auction items instead of including some new things that I think will interest people like Mr. Ulrich back there and David Gracie, some really good hunting trips coming up. We've got a gator hunting trip coming up. We've got all kinds of great things, but we still need a few more uh, live auction items. And I encourage all of you, if you can think about something that you might want to donate as far as like vacation, vacation homes, um, experiences. People love experiences. And, those, and that's just a, a really great program, the live auction. And silent auction, we still need a silent autumn, uh, auction items as well. Um, this year, we're trying to look for things that are over uh, a value of like $100, just so that it wasn't as, remember how crazy it was last year? We had way too much stuff. So, um, you know, just something a, a little bit more compact. And uh, so if anybody has anything, please come and see me. Um, committee members, will you please stand up and be recognized? There's one, I see Barbara's gonna sit down and not stand up, and then there's Billy. All right, well, we've got a few. So if you have any questions about the auction, please ask these folks, and we appreciate you so much. They've done an amazing job. Marie, where'd Marie go? Oh, well, Marie over there, another wonderful committee member that we have. And um, again, we hope that you'll come on December 6th. We hope that if, you, if you'd like to donate, please come see me or one of these wonderful committee members and please bring a friend. Um, we've gotten some fantastic feedback from people that we didn't even know that just came and people brought wonderful friends and became part of our sustainable Cambodia family. So that's me, thanks. Hi everybody. <laughs> this is such a big experience for us. This is our family. Of, um, on the other side of the world and all of you. This, the Sustainable Cambodia experience really belongs to every single person who joins us and being as a sponsor, who asks a question, who uh, gathers to help us, you know, when we, we need to come together for the fundraiser, who just 
sends us their goodwill. I mean, that it, it really belongs to every single person, especially we have a room full of sponsors. And I just want to tell you, there are sponsors for a decade all over Gainesville, and we're so grateful. And many of you are in the room today. I'll quickly see if I can run through Barbara Anderson. Dan Boyd is here today. Thank you, Dan. Elena, Mary Chance, the Eubank family, Bobby Hall, Dean Henderson, Helen Kornblum, Deborah Newell, Jay Nordquist, Linda Reinhardt and her parents, Pat Thomas, Jenny Van Hart, Doug Wilcox, Naomi Williams, the Ziegel family, Stacy Scott, Brendan Shortley, Susan Spain, and more and more and more than I can list over, over the years. Thank you. You may have uh, seen that I skipped one incredible person and I'm looking straight to you, Nancy Hart. The reason was I wanted to introduce um, a message from one of our scholars, Richard let you know what a, a development it is for our children to come in and begin their earliest days sitting in interactive play, beginning to learn their own language first, Kamai, and then expanding that interest into asking questions, belonging to a group, looking after each other, knowing what nutrition is, and then manifesting their health and their cognitive development from all of those activities. We watch that happen. And in all of that, through our school system, we, uh, we grow into our scholarship program, which is extraordinary. So of those, the scholars are out in the world. It takes a lot of courage to leave Little Posat and go to Phnom Penh or Sien Reap or Baton Bong into this unknown adventure. And our children are prepared when they go, they have support when they go, they have each other, and they have all of you, their sponsors. Here is the uh, first semester correspondence from Nancy Hart, sponsor scholar, whose name is Piek. And of all the questions that she is answering with our guidance, for example, what are the names of the courses you're taking? What is an unexpected joy that you had? What, what is a challenge? Uh, tell us a little story to help us know you better, something from your life. But I love this question and how Piak answered it. She is in year one, semester one in marketing. And her question is, um, would you like to know about a favorite subject this semester and something important in this subject for my future plans? She says, it's microeconomics. So this subject is useful for me in the future because my study is really related to the economy and all courses are, shown, are showing me about the economy in Cambodia and I know which computers are in Cambodia as well as marketing. So I notice that the focus on economic subject is a good way if I can do business for my family I am a farmer's kid. So my parents grow vegetables to sell at the market. And in some case, there are a lot of vegetables who import from Thailand that makes our local vegetables get a lower price. So I will learn about that and giving some strategies to increase vegetable prices of our local things. And she is already awake to what's possible. She has an idea. She's ready to make a difference in your community. I, I love this so much. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible with, um, with, a, with belonging and opening doors and walking through with them. Thank you, everybody. I also, uh, I just wanted to uh, call out Pizza Bill. Um, Pete, uh, Pizza Bill was signed up to go with us on the trip to Cambodia uh, in January and wound up with a family traveling thing that was going to interfere with that. And so he wound up donating his entire trip cost that was otherwise going to be spent traveling all the way over to Cambodia and back. And he donated that all. So he's like a super mega sponsor now. So thank you for that, Bill. <laughs> yeah. 
Apologies for calling you out without asking you first. And with, with that, um, I, do we have any questions? There's a question from Pete. Here comes the microphone, Pete. There, uh, Pete Enwald. There's some new folks here. And uh, could you explain how the, the word sustainable got into the name of the pro of the project? I don't think uh, we actually yeah. heard that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, I think it was just part of when we initially started the program that we we, it was super important to us that this not be just a giveaway program. Uh, those just don't work. I mean, you can give stuff away and, and in a disaster or something that's really important, but you know, to have something that lasts long term, you've got to make it sustainable. And we just thought, well, why not just put it right in the name? And we were so naive that we thought, oh, you know, we'll, of course, we did this. We actually put on the website the whole, you know, 160 page development plan that we had worked out in the first three years and, and how it was working and figured, well, this way other organizations in other countries can use that same plan for sustainable change in their country. And they'll have like sustainable fill in the blank. You know, we thought we'd just go from country to country to country, sustainable Rwanda, sustainable Nairobi, sustainable, whatever, whatever, you know, uh, and, and that part never actually happened. <laughs> but really in sync with Rotary because Rotary grants now require the sustainability to be a key factor in the program and how is it going to continue how will the the outcomes continue at the at the end of a defined period so it's, it's a it, Rotary is such a part of what we do thank you Rotary microphone <laughs> for everybody on zoom Get to thinking about having fun and donating at the same time, because um, I had not the slightest idea I would go on an African safari, but I bid it, and for $3,000, you can both have a wonderful time and donate $1,500 to Sustainable Cambodia. So... Um, it was a fantastic trip. I never expected to go, but I took my daughter and we just had a ball. Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. And we've heard the same thing from everybody that's gone on, on those trips to, uh, to African safari. It's, a, it's an amazing adventure. And, and this year, of course, we'll have gator hunting and frog gigging and uh, <laughs> all, sor all sorts of stuff a little closer to home. <laughs> oh. One more. One more. Um, I've kind of dropped away from the program, but I, I'm going to get myself back involved. Um, I know one of uh, our uh, sponsee children uh, graduated Petty. and is now working. Hey, yeah. Yeah. You yes. remember his name. Petty. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> and what I really wanted to say related to what was just shared back a number of years ago, uh, we had a a young person in the family who had had to go to a drug treatment program. And uh, we sent her along to Cambodia as an experience. And she is now the uh, uh, person who is the reason we are grandparents. And it's wonderful. Thank you. If, if I can pony on that, um, I actually took my niece, uh, I don't know, maybe seven years ago, who was just struggling, just really not, didn't know who she was, didn't know what she wanted to do. Um, you know, kind of at the end of the, those teenage years when you're a little bit depressed and trying to figure it out. And I tell you, she came back with such clarity. And she's now a school counselor because she wanted to work with kids. So same thing. Yeah. So yeah, besides the auction, then remember to, we do these trips every January and every February. And uh, anybody that would like to go on any of these, just keep that in mind. Um, they're, they're, I've had so many people that are, you know, as young as I am, <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, at this age, who have told me that it is the most uh, uh, life-changing trip they've made in their lives. And that's quite, a, quite amazing. So please consider coming with us. And with that, I'm going to, um, if 
if we get that slide back up. Thank you. Elena and Susan, thank you so much for what you do along with Richard and your team. Um, I just want to, um, yeah, as you can see, they do an amazing work, the Sustainable Cambodia team around the world. And it started with an idea that was acted upon. And through Rotary, you were able to make bigger impact. So that's one of the things about having more Rotarians involved because we can reach bigger and brighter days ahead. So thank you so much. And Richard, I'm Again, thanks for sharing that. Um, I hope everyone will support the auction, uh, bring friends to the day, the day of the auction that might be interested in some of the items or supporting this cause. Uh, Again, that'll be, we'll keep hearing the date, and the date is December 6th, December 6th, so that's not far off. And so, one, one other thing I'd like to acknowledge is this year, Richard um, has been not only a friend, as he's been for a long time now, but he's been a great ally in helping me and guiding me and doing a lot behind the scenes along with others in the club. But I just want to acknowledge you, Richard, for the work you're doing in our club as well. So thank you so much. I'm giving you this card to acknowledge that. Thank you. Yes. And also, what I would like to do is this is the standard in, you know, the don uh, appreciation certificate that shows that we're giving a donation to the Cade Museum Scholarship Fund, which helps children that otherwise might not be able to attend the Cade to attend some of the programs so they get the opportunity, just like the kids in Cambodia through this program, to learn things they might not otherwise learn and change their lives. Thank you. Love the Cade. Good. So let's see. Again, thank you everyone for attending. Um, I hope you can join us next week when our speaker will be Rick Mulligan. Rick is a former member of our club, as some of you may recall, and he is now a full-time docent that's why he doesn't come to the meetings on Tuesdays out at the uh, Marjorie Kenan Rollins farm. He spoke to us or with us about two years ago, I believe, and it was spellbinding. He's a great storyteller. Well, he's going to give us an inside scoop on the Long family. And the Long family is uh, who Marjorie Kenan Rollins wrote her Pulitzer Prize winning book, The Yearling. She modeled it after the story she learned from the Long family in the scrub of the California National Forest. Back then, it wasn't a national forest. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Quote of the day uh, was actually given to me by Richard. And thank you, Richard. Um, you had some great ones too, Tom, but I, I went with Richard. What you wish to ignite in others must fir first burn within yourself. St. Augustine of Hypo. So the winning, last three digits of the winning ticket for the uh, Rotary raffle is 635, and with that, we're adjourned.